This is a special presentation from the Brighton Central School District Board of Education. Good evening and welcome to the Brighton Central School District Board of Education education meeting for January 7th, 2020, which is very odd hearing that said. <laughs> and welcome everyone and Happy New Year to everybody as we start up uh, the new calendar year with uh, all of our activities. At uh, the beginning this evening, we offer the opportunity for public participation. Any members of the public here in attendance who wish to address the board on any matter, uh, ask a question or make a statement may do so. Uh, is there anyone here this evening who wishes to address the board? I would say attendance is a little light this evening and we have no one uh, indicating their desire to address the board, so we will move on. Uh, board, may we have a motion please for approval of our agenda? So moved. Second. Moved by Karen and seconded by Larry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Uh, motion now then please for approval of the minutes <coughs> from our December 17th, 2019 business meeting. So moved. Second. Moved by Larry and seconded by Andrea. Does anyone have any uh, corrections, additions or deletions to those minutes? Then all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Then we're gonna start off the new year with our principal reports and we will begin with Council Rock Primary School and Principal Matt Tappan. So you're actually getting a two for one. All right. Um, because before the break, we had planned on presenting uh, a little bit about science and how science has evolved, um, some of the new standards, and how we are responding to that kind of K-12. So that is going to continue to happen. And then we will intersperse our own uh, building uh, updates that will be a little briefer than normal. So. Um, this presentation was put together mostly by Renee Weedor, who is our K-5 math science uh, coach, um, with support from Allison and myself. So we are presenting as a threesome, although she's not here. So, um, so yes, so, uh, so a little bit about the next uh, generation science standards. If you don't know, they have been a long time coming. I know you will find this 100% you know, a surprise that New York State took a long time to <laughs> define and then produce uh, what they needed, which then put all of those people who were planning for it, not only our teachers, but the companies that like to support um, the science learning with all the materials, kind of behind the eight ball. So we're kind of slowly rolling this out um, as, uh, as New York State did. But, um, one of the things that they did was they uh, added three dimensions to the science standards. So there are the practices, so those are like the doing of science. There are the disciplinary core uh, ideas, which are the facts or the things that you kind of memorize and learn. And then there's something called the cross-cutting concepts, which are the things that kind of go all through all different things and connect the science. So um, when you see this tri-colored um, uh, symbol, it actually has the meanings of the practices, the content, and the cross-cutting concepts. So a little bit about the engineering practices. So they fall under investigating practices, sense-making uh, practices, and critiquing. So those are things like asking questions. So these are what good scientists do. They ask questions, they plan and carry out investigations, and they use math and computational thinking. The sense-making, developing and using models, so you'll see that throughout analyzing and interpreting data, and constructing explanations and designing solutions. And then under the critiquing, engaging in argument, so really being able to support what your thought is after you've put it forward, and then obtaining and evaluating and communicating information. So those are the, the three kind of strands underneath the practices. And then the disciplinary core ideas are um, life science, earth and space science, physical science, and engineering technology science. So again, those are kind of the pillars of the facts. So we have gone with Smithsonian. Yes, the uh, Smithsonian Institute. So yes, we've gone with a very reputable company. Um, we used to work through BOCES and do the BOSAT kits, but we did a, the science team did a pretty thorough trials of all the different kind of materials that were out there. And it was difficult because they were coming out as they hot off the presses and they were you know, oh, we've got this one ready for you. Can we try this? So our science team, K-12, really did a great job, actually K-6 for this, um, looking at, and Smithsonian 
fantastic. They really are. They live up to the name of their institute and um, the, the museum. They really are great. So they have developed these units, and these are the units when we are fully implemented. And I'm going to say that a couple times. We are not fully implemented. We're still kind of half in you know, the BOSAT kits and then half in the Smithsonian because it is a large lift for teachers to shift to some of these uh, changes. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about implementation, but you can see, and we'll highlight a couple of these as, so in your packet you should have the names of these, but they put together a little bit. So one of the first ones that we did at first grade was how can we uh, send a message using sound? Um, and that is the kind of the inquiry, the, the entire big idea. Um, so this is all about sound, waves, um, some of the same things that you might have thought about studying when you were you know, younger. But they uh, are charged with answering the question, what is needed to make sound, to discover how music is made. Um, and then actually here is a video of Mrs. Flaherty's first grade class. They had to test different kazoos while arguing evidence for which kazoo parts made the best kazoo sound in one of the modules. So let's see if I can get this to work. So, I have, as I've, sound. Yeah, as I've walked through, I just have to tell you, these are highly engaging. The kids are really, really into what, you know, the questioning. Um, it's all the things we want in scientists and really looking at what those next fields <coughs> are and pushing kids to really wonder, think, and then ask the questions and design the experiments to get them to the answers. Um, at second grade, we've implemented the erosion. So talking about erosion, it always connects back, and there are a lot of supplemental materials that connect back to real life for the kids so that it's not just kind of singularly standing out there as, you know, does this float or does this sink? It talks about all of the things that, um, that it means in life. So I'll let Allison talk a little bit about what it looks like at third grade. Thank you. So one of the other great parts about this over time is that kids are going to be able to become familiar with Smithsonian from first grade up. So they're going to be able to, as they get into these kits, they kind of have the same patterns that they follow. They're answering an essential question, as Matt talked about a little bit. So in third graders, the first module that we worked on this year was looking at predicting patterns of motion. And third graders did that in a variety of ways. So in this picture, there are some kids from Jessica Cordova's third grade classroom who are using balloon models to de describe how non-contract forces affect an object's motion in this module. And the kids really enjoyed that. Everything is hands-on, as Matt said. So there's always manipulatives. There's always some experiment and something to figure out. And in the same module, um, kids tried things with, um, we saw the balloon in Jessica's class. And in this picture in Dory Simmons' class, we have the kids um, predicting patterns of motion using a ping pong ball. So just different ways for the kids to think about what <coughs> impacts the um, object as it's moving along. And then here are other kids in Dory Simmons' class who are doing an experiment, and they're looking um, at the motion of a pendulum this time. So lots of different experiments for kids to kind of arrive at their central knowledge of what they've learned throughout the unit, and they are very engaged. I mean, they love science. The science um, incorporates a lot of ELA as well, so there are readers that the kids can use, different leveled readers as well, to support their learning. So it's been a great experience. So those are some of our third graders. And in fourth grade, the first module that they worked on was how does motion energy change in a collision? And in this picture, you're going to see a couple of groups of um, kids from Mrs. Aiello's fourth grade class. And this one, they're working on marble collisions with their group. And then here, in talking about collisions, this one was a fun one for the kids. They created helmets for the egg drop challenge. So creating the helmets and dropping the eggs, none of the eggs broke in this class, so they did a great job. <laughs> <laughs> but um, kids really could connect this to real life, and the connection was sports causing damage to the brain. So all of the things that they're learning about have real life connections too. Here are some fourth graders in Mrs. Wittick's class working on the same module. In fifth grade, the first module that we worked on this school year was how can we provide fresh water to those in need? And these are some kids in uh, Mary Dubois' class working outside. And they are trying to get water from one place to another using the materials that they were given. Very engaging. 
and also some students here doing the same thing in Julia Navarro's class. So you can see different ideas using gravity and different ways to set it up to see what works. Kids are very engaged. Our team has gone through at, at Fres. we are a little bit farther along than Council Rock, which I'll talk about in a moment because there are more kits available for the teachers to use that have been published already. So this is just a picture of our fifth grade teachers going through professional development this year for their next module. So um, the fifth grade just picked up the science this year. The third and fourth started last school year. So this is the fifth grade's first year getting into the Smithsonian kits. Um, and it's been really great. So Renee and Smith Smithsonian have provided a lot of great professional development for our teachers. So they are enjoying learning about why they're doing what they're doing and helping their kids have fun with the kids too. So for implementation, um, <coughs> this is a general plan over the next couple of slides, which, which will um, cover where everyone kind of lands. And you can see that at Council Rock, they've started implementation um, <coughs> last year and into this year. Some people tried it last year. This year we have more kits available. And actually this is going to be a little bit delayed even more so because Matt shared with me that the kits are not quite ready. So they're not coming out as soon as we thought. So. Um, as soon as they're available, we're using them with our kids, and they've been great. At third, fourth grade, we have everybody, um, by the end of this current school year, will have gone through all of the science kits because it's their second year going through. So last year, they went through two, and some people went through the third kit as it came out, and this year, everyone will go through that. There's a picture of some of our fifth graders. So that's our <coughs> science update. We're going to jump over to Council Rock now. So before we go on, yeah. do you guys want to ask any questions or comments about the kind of K-5 mm -hmm. portion Thank of the Matt. science? So when you talk about um, the kits not being ready, once we have the kit, it's something that can be used again and again mm -hmm. and again. We supply the materials. We, that yes, we keep the kits. Well, we, we are the, BOCES keeps the kits for us, but okay. we have access to the kits and we're the only people using the kits right now. So um, when they're available, we can use the kits. They're just not published yet, so we can't have access to them yet. I They're work in of, progress. One of the unique things about this, and I think one of the reasons we ended up going with Smithsonian, besides the high quality of it, was that we jumped on board early, and uh, at least at Council Rock, we piloted uh, a couple of them when they were still kind of works mm -hmm. in progress, and actually got materials for free because of that, and then provided um, feedback to the writers about the lessons, about the assessments, about things that experiments that were in it, and several of our teachers will be named, you know, and credited within those books, which nice. again is just exciting. Um, but it was a way that we kind of were early adopters on that, um, and then are bringing the rest on board. So the professional development has been really key, and by doing that, we mm -hmm. got actually some quality professional development for free as well as part of the package. So it was really exciting. Is the intention that the K-5 kits will continue to be evolving and updated and more available and new yes. subject matter yes, available? Yes, but four is the maximum. Four is the, okay. so four the, would be full implementation. To cover in a year. Correct. Right, but correct. availability of, they could, they will build that if library. If they're updating so speak, the kits, the will we have right? access to that? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, more. Well, and if they, if they add additional units. Yep, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay, great. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. Thanks. Great. So my update is relatively quick as I looked at what's happened since the last time we presented. So we had our, uh, we realized it was our eighth annual Stay in Your PJs and Read Day. Um, that started my first year that I was here. Um, so we had all kinds of reading activities, different um, guest readers, activities, um, people doing great challenges, but it just was a really nice, quiet way. We have Dr. Rio down yeah. here. We had guest uh puppies that we read to. I was a guest reader in like 13 rooms. I've never gone home so tired as I did that day. You know, it's a really, you think you want to be in your PJs at work, and then PJs aren't meant for work. They really aren't, even though they're fun and they're comfy, um, but especially when you're working that hard. Um, and then we had uh, Greg Alquist, who when we first started uh, our journey uh, with Habits of Mind, Greg is a former teacher of the year um, who teaches in Webster, and he came and spoke to our faculty about five years ago, kind of set us off in the journey. He really spoke a lot about my growth mindset. Um, we had him back, actually, as our continued evolution, um, and he's just a really inspiring teacher, an inspiring speaker, 
um, who he did growth mindset or uh, growth mindset he called it 2.0 because he added some of the newer uh, kind of iterations that Carol Dweck has uh, put into that and just kind of pushed our staff's thinking on how we continue to use that growth mindset to support our thinking, our support of our kids, um, as well as um, supporting the habits of mind as we see them going hand in hand. So, I'm gonna turn it, oh, upcoming events. Um, so starting Monday, we have our PTSA toy and book drive uh, that runs through all next week. Next Thursday at 7 p.m., we are gonna do it in the cafeteria. Um, we weren't sure where we were gonna do it. We're still kind of trying to plan with construction. Um, but Mrs. Jeffries and I talked about it today that, um, you know, we thought about streaming it into kindergarten classrooms. There just feels like there needs to be, for the first time, parents come to Council Rock, a togetherness feeling. So we're going to be together. We're going to be tight. We're going to be really together. But uh, 7 p.m. incoming kindergarten information night uh, at Council Rock in the cafeteria. We'll have people posted to get people to the cafeteria. Um, but we will share some information that is for parents of in of kids coming to kindergarten so not our current kindergartners next year's kindergartners if they're planning to come or want information on that of course Monday uh, we have no school Monday the 20th for Martin Luther King junior day and then um, I have a combined special education and meeting with the principal at 12 noon Wednesday January 22nd I'm gonna have to send out where that's going to be because we plan that time and then realize there's no place at Council Rock for that to happen. Um, so I will be sending out information. I have my PTSA uh, co-chairs meeting tomorrow, so we'll send out email blasts to let people know the topic, but also the location of that. Mystery, mystery location. Thank you very much, ma'am. We appreciate it. <laughs> you can leave, Matt. So it's concert time at Fres. So just before break we had four amazing groups perform our fifth grade chorus our blue band our red band and our orchestra sounding just as lovely as ever and we also had our ptsa family game night and meeting with the principal so in trying something new this year we are trying to kind of bring ptsa meetings with an event to bring families together so uh, we had a lot of families attend and we had um, probably about a dozen students from the high school come as well to play games with kids which was really helpful it's because the parents could come on the stage and talk with me and Miss O'Neill about anything that was on their mind so we had a great turnout we had lots of different things from challenging games to um, Legos for the little kids <laughs> and we have all of our fifth grade classes some have gone already some are going now and into um, this <coughs> month heading to the newly designed Challenger field trip. So Dr. Baker and I actually went together just before break, and we got to see the new experiences that the kids have, very similar um, kind of topic, but with all updated technology, and it was really amazing. The kids had such an awesome time. We went with Mrs. Dubois' fifth grade class, and we got to be part of the work that they were doing, and um, really impressive to see the work that they've done and how excited our kids and families were about that. Our third grade students, um, after the last time I presented, I realized I didn't share some of these and some people shared them into December, but we had um, star quality projects and this is a sampling from Mrs. Cannon and Mrs. Cordova's classes. Students had an opportunity to share um, as a culminating activity to their star quality unit, you know, what, what works with star qualities and what doesn't work. And kids, some kids made picture collages, some kids made videos, some did some writing pieces as you can see here. The kids did an awesome job with that, had a lot of fun. I thought this was neat to share because Mrs. Holfeth has been using Microsoft Translator with kids in her um, classroom who do not speak English. And this is a picture of one of our new students in um, November who came to us speaking no English and all of us are able to communicate with her because of Microsoft Translator. So um, our classes have picked that up to try that out this year and it's been a really great tool so I thought that would be great to share. And a shameless plug for our morning drop-off routine here. <laughs> we have some new signs out on the drop-off at Fres. There is Miss O'Neill with them. We are always trying something new to make drop-off more efficient um, and hoping for the best. So just if anyone sees this out there, maybe they will say, oh, yeah, maybe I can follow those signs. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, upcoming flies. events at Fres. Lots of roller skating coming up. Uh, fourth grade chorus in a couple of weeks, which will be great. The fourth graders sound awesome and they love being um, performing for the first time for our school and their families. We have a movie night coming up at the end of the month. And then shortly after that, math team will start. Busy times at Fred's. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much.
are we having a group thing now for middle school, high school science thing, or are you leaving on his own? We're a little more separated. But okay, that's okay. We understand. It's I'm afraid he works. might make signs behind my back or something. Like that. <laughs> Whatever evening, it works. Happy... I'm not trying to goad Tom into joining you, so. Uh... Happy New Year, everybody. Mm. Welcome to the new decade. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Good to see Happy you guys. New Year, oh, yeah. And that's all I have. <laughs> uh, the next generation science standards have also uh, been a big part of the work in our uh, middle school. I really thank Debbie Baker for her leadership, Alpa Kandahar for all the work she's done with our teachers, Jen Twilliger, our, our team leader, and all the science teachers for embracing the change that has been a long time coming. And it's a department and a program that's been very strong in Brighton to begin with. But their shift, I think, is important and uh, well received by our by our department. It's really going from a more teacher-centered, spoon-fed, rote memorization directed by the teacher all the way through to a more inquiry-based, investigative approach. There, our students really become the scientists, the clinicians, the doctors, the researchers that are trying to understand science in a big picture format, not as separate entities in each, in each area. Uh, they focus on the explaining, or explaining phenomena or designing solutions and problems. They're really using a, more of a STEM approach in using the science, technology, engineering, and math in the work that they do. An analogy might be in, in the kitchen, you look at the separate, en separate parts of making a dish, the tools, the ingredients, maybe the spices, but really, when you put it all together, it's preparing a meal, which is the essential part. And that's what they're doing in their, in their work. Another analogy might be in, in uh, reading. Uh, you're learning vocabulary, definitions, spelling, uh, sentence structure. But if you never read a book, you're not really experiencing what, what you should be. And that's how we're looking at the scenarios that are going on at the middle school. Uh, we've <coughs> adopted a, a, a curriculum called Amplify which is a web-based program where the students are working on computers through different scenarios, not solely, but in a, in a much greater part than they used to. And they're brought to a scenario, and they have to find out what the problem is. In one example, a student is uh, reporting that she's tired all the time, and the kids have to figure out why this is happening. Is it from asthma? Is it a, a pancreas that's, that's injured or diseased? Are they just not getting enough sleep? Is it the diet? They go through all these things to finally learn that the, the fatigue is caused, caused by diabetes. And the process that they go through in a collaborative nature to learn this is, uh, really helps them, uh, helps them learn. Uh, one of the simulations the kids do in the classroom, they take on the role of a circulatory system. All the students in the class become blood cells. They transport nutrients and oxygen throughout the class, and then all of a sudden it stops and they investigate what uh, heart disease is and cardiac arrest, and they go through these uh, scenarios, which we couldn't get the video for tonight, but I tried to describe the best I could. Uh, in another scenario, they have to find out why plants and animals in a biome, and this is a true situation that happened in the 90s in a biome in Arizona, for those of you who might remember, uh, why the plants and animals aren't surviving or thriving in this scenario. And they found that the, the nutrients weren't returning into the environment quickly enough to support all the life that was there. So these kids are they're working together, they're being directed by the teacher, but they are uh, looking at lots of different strands of science while still within the life science curriculum. In seventh and eighth grade, they're doing a lot of work to plan the implementation of the next generation science standards for the 21-22 school year. It's getting harder and harder to identify the school years as we advance through. Um, in seventh grade, which has been primarily a chemistry-based program, they're adding many of the elements in physics. And in eighth grade, they're adding more of an earth-space program to, that really addresses climate much, much more into their eighth grade program, but trying not to recreate the earth science class, which is already going on with eighth graders as well, which is a regents level course. In physical science, they're still using uh, many of the concepts in this eighth grade course with gravity and uh, forces, magnetism, waves, and a lot of the other things that also implement or impact the earth and the uh, environment. So it's very exciting. It's a lot of hard work, and I, I'm really proud of our teachers for the work they've done and the way they've embraced the change. Any questions about the science at the middle school? That sounds good. 
Well, we did use a, a meal analogy earlier, and we have one here. The ELL Thanksgiving was just before our Thanksgiving, where families from all different cultures get together after school, directed by our English language learners and Kristen Halligan and her staff in that department, and they have a, a great time and a great meal. We had a meeting over here that day, and I was fortunate to get out in time to join them. We had the King Arthur Flower Assembly, and this uh, program uh, gives kids flour and teaches them how to bake, sends them home with all the, the material they need, and then they bake two loaves of bread and bring one back to donate to different uh, charities. And we collected over 400 loaves of bread and were actually featured in one of the uh, news spotlights on TV. Our, our chorus, orchestra, and band concerts have been going strong. Uh, we finished our first round of concerts in December. Uh, at French Road and at the middle school. Huge participation there. A great participation <coughs> in winter athletics with 151 total students in seventh and eighth grade and a number of different sports. And uh, 11 students, or excuse, excuse me, 13 are even up playing at the high school level. This is a picture of the swim team. They've, they've been doing really well. Uh, we had uh, a student, Oscar, Marilla Bond presented to our faculty earlier this year. He's been a, a real popular radio show personality and now on the cover of the Rochester magazine that you see here just recently. A uh, great spotlight and a great message and just a fabulous, intelligent, uh, well-spoken young man. Upcoming events at the middle school include activity nights for all three grade levels on the dates listed. We have a TCMS that should be slash BHS Pizza and Jazz night this week or next week on the 15th, uh, the first day of the second. I'm sorry, that's miswritten uh, there. The first day of the second quarter is actually on the third, first day of the second quarter. Last day of the second quarter is on the 31st of January. The 24th and 25th is the Junior High Solo Festival. I should proofread a little more before I put this up. But that's what's been going on at the middle school and a little bit more about the science program. Thank you very much, Rob. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks, Rob. <laughs> I wish Dr. Stein was here because he would be in his element right now. Uh, oh, he's watching. Of these he is. <laughs> he's watching from home. Could phone in. Probably Dr. Stein. Um, what's happened at the high school? So in terms of the rolling out the new uh, next generation standards, um, for the last several years, uh, we have had teachers, I'm just skipping to the second bullet, um, have attended the New York State Science Teachers Association, New York State Conference, and they have been rolling out those standards for the last four years. And we've had multiple teachers every year go there, and there's always uh, an introduction, and teachers are getting materials on how these new standards are going to roll out and when they're actually going to take effect. We have also had numerous teachers at the high school in the science department become New York State master teachers, and they're kind of on the cutting edge with working with other teachers from around New York State who are even more advanced uh, in terms of the standards um, and learning new labs and sharing ideas and activities is probably the best professional development uh, anyone could actually have is working with these teachers who are in the field doing it. Um, and we, uh, thanks to the support of Debbie, and I have to say Alpa Kandar, I know um, Rob gave a shout out to her too, our science instructional leader, um, 612. Without her leading this work and Debbie giving opportunities in the summer for curriculum writing, um, we wouldn't be making, uh, ver we would have made very little progress in terms of where we are right now. Lots of labs being implemented and new um, ideas. So some of the things that are um, actually, and you know, I, I was in the science department for five years teaching. It would have been incredible to have a common lab approach, 912. We are finally getting to that point where they are having a common lab experience and a writing. Uh... Carolyn, what do I do? <laughs> um, a common lab writing experience and what you do to put in your uh, formal lab. Um, results and how to talk about that. So that's being developed. This thing called whiteboarding, which you'll see in the science department and in the math department, whiteboards everywhere, big ones, small ones, uh, you know, all over the place, where kids are getting up and writing and talking and dialoguing and scripting out um, what they believe is the correct answer or what they believe is a, um, an approach to a problem. And teachers are going around and seeing what they're writing and actually, and the kids are all contributing with different colors and you know, they're having to take an active part in that. 
And then argument-driven inquiry, um, it's not a, a brand new idea, but for us, thanks to Alpa, I have to say, she has really uh, gone gung-ho with the department to introduce this concept. And as Rob was saying, not just, especially the chemistry labs, where it was kind of cookbook, you're adding this chemical, adding that chemical, seeing this reaction, you know, identifying, you know, maybe the, the um, properties of the materials that get created. You're actually looking at the problem, coming up with what you might propose, and multiple students might have different ideas. You're working together, then you actually carry out the experiment, and then you're whiteboarding, writing, and you're arguing your claim um, to see if, you know, based on your evidence, what which person and which idea uh, best supports um, the final outcome. And that's something that as uh, I've actually taken on all the new teachers uh, this year in the science department, and I've seen it in, in every single lab and class I've been a part of, they've been implementing this ADI idea. And I haven't really seen a concept like that get so thoroughly implemented, so it's been really nice to see. So these are some of the labs that people are actually, that have worked and they've developed over the summer, um, and problems they're investigating. This lab goes back to even before my day in Brighton <laughs> about looking at how enzymes are affected by pH, temperature, uh, concentration, and but now with the whiteboarding and with their other, again, ADI uh, design, it seems to be much more um, impactful and seems more exciting with the students who are doing the work, so it's been great. Um, looking down here, basically for the high school level, when will we start seeing these, you know, kind of the new science standards being assessed? We're not looking until the 2022 to 2024, starting with earth science, biology, then chemistry and physics. So it's a few years to come, but we're on our way to making it happen. Um, any questions about the high school science standards? Tom, did you mean by that timeline that those are when the state assessments will kick in? When but, the state assessments will actually all, be we're assessing. We're doing a number of the pieces already, and we'll be Correct. keep implementing additional curriculum desi designed by our people and utilizing past work. In other words, we're implement implementing now and along the way. That's the assessment schedule. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. I mean, they'll actually be assessed based okay. on these new standards, not until after or into the Got 2022 it. school yep. year, fourth grade, and I think it's, um, I don't know, I'm moving to the test at a fifth grade starting in 2021 for their science test. But. Hey, Tom, can I interject? I was yep. just going to say, Mark, you're spot on. I mean, that's, as a matter of fact, that's what we're doing for, like, this year, <coughs> fifth grade, this year, sixth grade, third graders, and sixth graders will be the first Be ready for that assessment piece. That's what I thought, but I just wanted to be clear. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Debbie. Question. All right, Tom. No, thanks. I think we're going to be in uh, good shape, and you know, the College Board has really made a lot of sweeping changes with the AP Sciences as well, and they're really moving into this design kind of already, and they're being assessed that way. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Happy New Year. Here we are in 2020. Um, I just want to give a huge shout out to our PTSA. They did a phenomenal job. These were just the volunteers who were actually there setting up, but they probably had over 60 people come together to put together this fabulous feast for our staff on the half day in December. Um, and it, you know, it's kind of morphed into there's a, there's a dessert table with tons of goodies that you can get, but they designed this whole salad bar concept that actually the idea came from French Road when we were there and people love it and it just suits everybody's needs and they just do an incredible job want to thank them and then along this, the wall there's crock pots filled with all sorts of soups and pastas and things that you can have it's it's an amazing night or, or luncheon and we had um, one of our acapella groups come down and and sing some Christmas carols uh, the parents arranged that as well it was I mean teacher Nirvana that's what I say in Brighton for, uh, for us and PTSA is a big part of that um, project, this uh, actually wrapped in all th three of the buildings, 312, um, maybe we can get Council Rock involved at some point, um, but Maria Concetos and Heather Bonadonna, this is kind of an annual thing they've done. The middle school students wrote mini mysteries, um, mini mystery, uh, 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 quite short stories. Our high school kids then came over after they got copies, they read them, they marked them up, they sat with the kids and they actually gave the students' feedback on their mini mystery. Um, so these are some of the high school kids who are with the um, middle school students, giving them feedback um, and sitting with them, having a writing conference. And then the, the goal is once they revise their writing, those 
mini mysteries will be sent to fourth graders at French Road and they're going to read them aloud in class and talk about them. So quite an awesome project. So big shout out to Maria and Heather. Um, College and Career Night at BHS. If you haven't been there yet, please come and check it out. Uh, if you're <coughs> ninth, 10th, or 11th graders, you can come, you know, if you're in ninth grade, there's options you can start and maybe every year you go to two different sessions. Uh, you can go to two sessions out of the multiple ones that we have. Uh, this started about, I think this is the fourth year of this College and Career Night. It's really expanded. Um, it's probably hard to read that, but these are all sorts of topics that will be discussed experts from the field and within our own building to talk about college and career um, and military, music, you name it, everything's there. It's really, just give the shout to it. the counseling department has done a phenomenal job with that. Midterms coming up already, only two weeks of school, then midterms. Uh, our PTSA meeting at noon at the end of the month is about program planning, selecting courses for next year. Eighth grade parent night in the class of 2024 is going to be at the end of January and tons of events, as you can see here, it's moving up through right to the end of the month. Any questions? Thanks uh, very much, Tom. We appreciate that. And, Thank you. And to all of our principals, we know it was difficult scheduling uh, December time frame, and it was very important to take a look and hear from you, the four of you, on the science standards and where we are in each building. So thanks, and thanks for the consolidated reports of, uh, of what's going on in the buildings. We appreciate that. Uh, a couple of other items of business this evening. Uh, may we have, board, please, a motion for approval on the first reading of policy 3225, community relations section on speakers at district events. So moved. Second. Uh, moved by Andrea and seconded uh, by Christina. Uh, this is a new policy uh, with regard, as it says, speakers at district events. Uh, we've talked off and on as a board and with leadership team about outside speakers, if you will, that come in for a variety of, of, of events or occasions. Um, and, and we haven't really had a specific policy around it. We have uh, two or three policies that touch on some aspects of it. But this now is a new policy um, to make sure that uh, when we have outside speakers invited in, uh, you know, they're coming into what's really a non-public forum setting. And we wanted to make sure that uh, content and, and, and elements of speech and what they're planning to do are all fit within uh, what we deem appropriate for, for our uh, district setting. So, Dr. McGowan, did you have anything further on that? that you know, I think you described it really well. I, I think that um, we're in an interesting period of time, one with a presidential election approaching quickly, a, you know, pretty significant division in our country. And wherever you are on the political <coughs> spectrum, I think it's clear to people there's a lot of division and there's a lot of strong opinion. And there's also this issue of, of uh, fact versus fiction. Uh, what What is being presented to people? And we can choose any number of television stations, cable stations at night and find things being presented as fact on, again, all ends of the political spectrum that are not factual. And just us trying to think really deeply about the fact that kids are a captive audience and we want to provide space for all different perspectives, all different opinions, but that we really carefully vet who's speaking to our kids to make sure that um, what is being presented is being done so in a way that is pedagogically appropriate, is uh, nonpartisan, but find the right balance in still having an academic environment and a freedom of thought environment where we can have really authentic, rich, deep, conversations and debates about important issues. And so this policy gets at that and it just helps give us some guidelines and support, some support in that um, as we've become increasingly aware over time of just the need to be uh, uh, intentional in that work. And, and I, as I say intentional, it's not that people in the past were uh, freewheeling and, and irresponsible in that way, but this is something that just helps us we are always thinking relative to board policy of how do you make sure you help legislate, so to speak, good practice. And this is one of the things that does that. And policy is something that we helps us live by that and think about these things in advance of an issue, right? And so in an environment where there could be potentially questions about the types of speakers and who comes in, this gives people good guidelines to go by or start in that. We'll develop further regulation around it. Um, but again, finding that space for everybody um, is important. Okay, great. Well said, and and 
as we said also, it's not a lengthy policy. It's fairly straightforward, very simple, fairly simple in, in, in its outline, if you will, in its guidance. And one of the things that it does do is, as Dr. McGowan said in his wrap up, it authorizes the superintendent to develop the procedures around implementation, which is normally the case, regulation part of it. So what we'll do is, um, this is the first read. Uh, if we go ahead and approve it this evening, the first read, we'll hold it open for further comment uh, from any board members, any members of the public, or any of our staff members who wish to weigh in and any further comment. Certainly we'll take that under advisement prior to bringing it forward for a second read. Are there any questions from board members this evening? Anything further anybody has? Pretty straightforward. Yeah. Okay. And all in favor of the first read? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. And then the other policy item that we have this evening is the, uh, may we have a motion to approve second read policy 6121, which is a personnel policy, which regards uh, sexual harassment in the workplace. So moved. Second. Uh, moved by Larry, seconded by uh, Karen, and again, this is an update to law and reporting, and uh, we discussed this at length at, the, at a previous meeting, and I don't have anything further that was brought up regarding to this. Does anybody have anything on that? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. And then uh, we have a few items on our consent agenda this evening, uh, mostly fundraising activities, field trip approvals, and we have one gift. A motion, please, for approval of the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Moved by Karen, seconded by Andrea. And we, the one gift that we do have, we, we want to acknowledge, and we appreciate Dr. Howard Koft, a uh, gift to the Visual and Performing Arts Department, uh, two large painting easels and several painting journals and Eastman Magazine journals. So we thank him for that gift to VPA at uh, the high school. So all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Uh, board members, any further business this evening? Anything anybody would like to bring up? Good. Dr. McGowan? Nope. I don't know. All right, then we'll entertain, please, a motion to adjourn. We next meet on January 21st, 7 p.m. here in the boardroom. So may we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Moved by Larry, seconded by Christina. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. This has been a special presentation from the Brighton Central School District Board of Education.